earlier tonight, I spoke to uh, one of the BBC's most senior and experienced foreign correspondents, Jeremy Bowen, who's the author of a book called War Stories. He's reported for several years on conflict in the Middle East. He was in Bosnia and Kosovo during the Balkan Wars of the 1990s. And he too is now absorbing the news that Russia has invaded Ukraine. I asked him, how did we get here? In a sense, perhaps for, for now and for today, it's an argument that doesn't really matter, but it's something that we need to understand and, and to look back on and try and work out properly. And that is this whole business of what happened in the 1990s, about the opportunities that were missed to change the security architecture of Europe to something that suited the post-Cold War that perhaps offered Russia, which was, don't forget, in the 1990s under Gorbachev and then under Yeltsin, was seen as a, a friend of the West. There's, there was, in the course of that, that you know, the diplomacy of the last couple of months, a lot of debate about just exactly the, the rights and the wrongs of the expansion of NATO into the former e communist satellites of Eastern Europe, and uh, whether or not that really mattered. And of course, coming from Moscow, there were loud noises saying it really did matter. I came upon a, a, an article that a man called George Kennan wrote in 1997 in the New York Times. George Kennan was a guru of uh, thinking about the Soviet Union in the years of the Cold War. He was the one who, after the Second World War, as the Cold War was starting, the Iron Curtain was coming down, came up with the idea of containment. He wrote this piece absolutely deploring the expansion of NATO in 1997. And uh, he said he's advancing a view, bluntly stated, I'm quoting now, expanding NATO would be the most fateful era of American policy in the entire post-Cold War era. And just one more line or two from him. He says, such a decision, wrote Cannon, may be expected to inflame the nationalistic, anti-Western and militaristic tendencies in Russian opinion. So that was, you know, you could say that you know, perhaps they had the gift of prophecy. Because President Biden this very evening referred to the Soviet Union and accused Vladimir Putin of looking to re-establish it. Uh, in your mind, is, is Vladimir Putin's ultimate aim clear here? I, I think that perhaps not exactly the Soviet Union, but the glory of Russia, which for him was symbolized and, and embodied in the Soviet Union, which, of course, he, he served in the KGB. And I've seen over the last, since 2015, the way that the Russians have come back into the Middle East. And Putin didn't do that just because he was concerned about the activities of, of Islamist extremists or because he wanted to help his ally, President Assad. He did it because he wanted to establish that Russia was a player, that Russia was a world power. And in fact, in terms of that part of the Middle East, he pretty much succeeded. Russia calls the shots there. Russia won the war for the Assad regime. So this is a, a, a deeper and more significant item on his agenda, what happens in you know, the near abroad uh, for the Russians, and also the, the restoration of what he believes is the rightful position of a country with its uh, its history. So it's become a terribly toxic brew. This is already very serious. Clearly, we, we know of casualties. How much more serious do you think it could get? Well, you know, the problem is, is that when uh, fighting starts, people start getting killed and commanders take things into their own hands or they push forward or uh, perhaps they chase their enemies over borders. Uh, it could get very serious indeed. While the fighting goes on, and while the Russians push forward, really anything can happen. That was Jeremy Bowen, the BBC's Middle East editor, with his thoughts on the events of today and how they sit alongside.